Hello, I'm Matt O'Leary, and I am here with Notes Reviews, another special collaboration. We did the Deer Hunter last time, and now we're going to do uh, Tesseract, a progressive metal and gent band's fourth album called Sunder. I haven't said that yet, so now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now I'm saying it. Like I've, I've seen it a number of times. Yeah, is it Sonder? Sunder? Sonder? Yeah, it's Sunder. Sunder, okay. Yeah, and that, that's that word, let's just start with that word. Yeah. I've, I've heard that it's understanding the vitality or, or like complexity of other people's lives. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. Know, or knowing that they're as, 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 um, you know, deep and complex as your own, basically that understanding. Well, and that actually fits perfectly with the album cover, like the album art. Oh yeah. Which I particularly love because it, it does... For me, it does two things. Like it's obviously the the planets mm -hmm. with the sun around it. Yeah, but the other are... thing that it also looks like is uh, the elements of I want to say it's nitrogen with the four protons. I think that's the one. Oh, sorry, nine nine protons because oxygen is to eight, and I want to say it's nitrogen. Anyway, it has like mm. the dual meaning of like okay. the grand scale of the planets as well as the minuscule scale of the sure. atoms yeah i love those like concentric circles and i feel like it, it works well with their uh just really like somber serious because mm -hmm. you're going for a very like intense and serious sound yeah um yeah. and tone and all their music so i just think it has that like that darkness okay so let, let's start with your thoughts on past albums i know you've done a review of polaris yeah. What did you What did you think of that album in general? So, yeah, because they only put out two or two and a half with uh, the Polaris redone, um, which was more of a um, yeah, like a reworking of the the music from that. I loved Polaris. Uh, it was one of my favorite albums of that year. Yeah, same. Um, it just hit me really hard. And what I loved about Polaris is that um, they took like the the style of of Gent. Yeah. Yeah. Without, like completely just submerging themselves in it they used it more as an atmospheric technique mm -hmm. to further the music forward as yeah just, hey this is how technical we can be exactly yeah it doesn't feel i mean none of their music feels like it's just in your face just like showing off just it yeah. there's there's a focus on atmosphere there's a focus on emotion and mood and mm -hmm. you know they just do they do like soft gent i think better than anybody yeah. else and I remember, I don't know where I read it, but somebody had said that Gent was just an, uh, a bunch of musicians that had technically playing skills, but didn't know how to write a song properly. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's true in certain extents. Like, I, as much as I love a lot of the Gent masters, like Animals as Leaders, yeah, it's yeah. really hard to tell their songs apart because they're oh. so similar. Yeah, Whereas yeah. the Tesseract you can tell each song apart because it has their own identity and that's what sets them apart is their mm -hmm. mastery mm -hmm. of the music writing craft of crafting these like actual songs instead of just riffs. Oh yeah. And you know, just to mix those ambient sounds in there with yeah. just the massive, just crunching riffs to be able to do that seamlessly. I feel like takes such production mastery. I mean, it always sounds like so crisp and clear compared to, basically any other genre of music. I feel like this is just like a very vivid sound. Very yeah. uh, bass heavy, drum heavy. Drums are always like at the front of the mix with the vocals. Yeah. And, and I think for me what sets Tesseract apart and what always has is um, just the, the vocals I think are incredible. For sure. I mean, oh, yeah. it's like a every performance is just like, what? I, it's, it's like you, something you'd expect from like a Broadway Mm -hmm. you know, a seasoned Broadway performer. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I, I particularly love of this record, um, is how much he's able to just explore his vocal works. Oh, yeah, he's he's so good. It's just, yeah, it's kind of jaw-dropping. And I actually, the first album I heard was Altered State. Okay. Um, and, I, and I love Polaris too, but I'd say Altered State for me is probably my top okay. Tesseract album. Uh, the first one I heard, maybe that's part of it, but they actually had a different vocalist on that one. Oh, did um, they? I didn't know that. Yeah, and that uh, you've listened to that one, right? I have. I'm not as familiar with it. Like I've yeah. listened to it a number of times, but I keep going back to Polaris. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. Polaris I'm more is familiar with Polaris mm -hmm. than Altered Pol State. Polaris feels more succinct. 
Like there aren't as many songs. Each one has like a solid identity. They're kind of like diverse, but it all works together. I feel like Altered State is more of like this big, massive, epic sort of feel, even with like the names of the songs and the movements right. sort of across it. Um, but it's actually Ash O'Hara was his name, and now they now the singer's name is Daniel Tompkins. Um, yes. But Ash had a very feathery sort of ethereal, soft, light voice. Maybe not quite as dynamic and as wide of a range. Okay. Um, yeah. as, as Daniels, but definitely like as beautiful, I'd say. And that one, I don't know, just the highs on that one, the peaks are like beyond anything they've done since in my, yeah, in my opinion. So, but yeah. they actually, they had another album before then, which was uh, one. So they actually have three albums, um, up yeah, to I this point. I about one, I guess because, um, Spotify links it as an EP as opposed oh. to a full length album. Yeah, yeah. I, Getting that it's a full-length album? Yeah, so that one's probably the heaviest, I'd say. That okay. one's the most pure gent style. Right. Um, it has some heart heavier vocals. Um, so they brought a little bit of that back on this one, actually. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's let's dive into this one. Uh, I, I think the first song is worthy of talking about. Oh, Lumi- for sure, yeah. Luminary. I, I want to pronounce it as Luminary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's I'm the, like terrible with pronunciations. Yeah, so. that was the single. <laughs> that's like your trademark, though. You got. To... <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I almost like emphasize that I can't pronounce it right just to uh, <laughs> piss off some of my viewers. But yeah. So Luminary starts with some just thunderous riffs, um, mm. but then right away you get that contrast that they've always done really well of sort of the lighter, poppier, sparkly um, section with the higher singing and sort of they still have gent like going kind of like the heavier going in the background, but it's not as distorted. It's a little bit softer um, and kind of accom- like accommodating the vocals. This track, I think it gives you everything that they do kind of in one like succinct package. Yeah, I agree. This is definitely why we come to Tesseract. Uh, this is like what's yeah. essential to yeah. trust Tesseract. Right. Um, I love that it, it has that great start uh, hitting the audience right from the opening note. And then not really letting them go. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's that rhythm section that I love that they utilize with that gent technique uh, with the rhythm of the guitars that is really intense and like hypnotizing as mm-hmm, well. Mm-hmm. Like I almost feel like I'm going into a trance with a lot of these, uh, these rhythms. Um, and it's the chorus. It's the contrast between the rhythm of the verses that go into the chorus uh, that contrasts the two. Um, and like each one has a distinct counter of one another. Mm-hmm. So that it brings out the identity of both that I feel is really, really um, like what Tesseract does well. Mm-hmm. It, that, yeah, the, the rhythm section, the, the riff at the beginning and the, the meter of that compared to the meter of the, the chorus. Yeah. It, it's just so bizarre. Like in the chorus they have, like you think it's going to be this like steady 6-8, like it's dun 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 But then they give you like a, I think there's a, bar of five and then seven and then it goes back to six. like it's just like the most yeah. jarring but it all it flows really well it's hard to just nod your head to honestly because <laughs> like there's no like consistency they're just yeah. so often mixing it up yeah. the way yeah. that and they what I, what I really love about this is the sound effects that they put on the guitars and i don't uh, know if they're using mm-hmm. a synthesizer to enhance it is it that like yeah. is that the part oh, you're talking that's about the one. yeah and um I don't know, it, it feels like they're like purposefully not harmonizing it properly, but it adds just a little bit of extra spice to the song that yeah. I, I really enjoy. Yeah, and you'll notice on that part on the pre-chorus, they, the drums get muffled. It's like this, yeah. almost like you're listening from like outside the, the club or something, and it's like... Yeah, yeah, it's like the meme that was going on a couple, uh, like last year, where it's a track but being played in a different room. Yeah, exactly, and yeah. I think like having that right before the chorus just breaks out makes the chorus pop that much more and that yeah. hook yeah it's almost like the kool-aid man bursting through that other wall <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> you imagine the kool-aid man just breaking out a riff like that i think that's a that's a highlight for me for sure right. um yeah, for me for me it's actually the second song of king that's a, a real highlight for me mm-hmm yeah, that one's that one's different than Polaris or Altered State for yeah, sure. That's why I love it. I love that it's just so different, um, and it, it, how crazy intense it is. Like right from that beginning note, and it does, doesn't really let up. 
it's the first time that I can remember where the lead singer's really, like, almost growling, like he's yelling when he starts screaming that bow down. Oh, man. I just get chills every time that happens. I know. Every scream on this album is, like, just grabs my attention. It's like... Yeah. And the best I, I like the fact that they use it very sparse. Mm. And that's what makes them stand out. Because if he was just screaming his balls off the entire time, yeah. I feel like it would have gotten old. But because it's very sparse, mm-hmm. it just mm-hmm. adds it when it needs to be added. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Because I... Like, when it's just consistent, sort of monotone screaming, um, mm-hmm. it doesn't doesn't quite have the same effect. But when it's just added... Because I feel like screaming naturally is, like, it should be the the height, the, the peak of your feeling in the song, you know? Yeah. It shouldn't just be, like, you're just screaming the whole narrative. Like, to me, that just feels, like, disingenuous or something. And I like music that has more screaming, but this mm-hmm. feels like the right balance. Yeah, okay. yeah, I fully agree, and I've I've mentioned that in a few of my um, like between the Barry to me and Opeth reviews, where half of the songs are just like screaming the entire time, and uh-huh. it's really hard to even get into them because you're so up at like the eleventh notch that I'm like, I need some come down, I need some breather <laughs> space. Oh man, Opeth fans are gonna be after you for that one. <laughs> come at me! I really like the sequence that they this song goes through because uh, the middle sequence it really starts to mellow out, and mm. this allows for that breathing that we were talking about with the screaming. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's it's one of my favorite parts of the song because it allows a little bit of air into it. Mm. Um, it breathes a little bit of new life, and Dan's uh, harmonization work on this it really dances with the atmosphere. Um, yeah. but then it allows for that really great buildup, which ushers us into the latter half of the song. Yeah. There's kind of two, two halves. Contrast, right. And that buildup is just so. Yeah. The, um, it's funny you mentioned the harmonies because he's actually like on the chorus, it's rare for you to throw a, a fourth interval in there, which is like a, if you think of like, dun, 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 dun. Like, yeah, dun, dun, dun. That's, the, that's the harmony in there, and it's like, it's a pretty unique sound, but it's really cool. Like, right when the, the, the king has all that part. Uh, oh, so, right, right, yeah, it's super creative. Um, and then this one is like the angriest, feels like they're being really critical of some, yeah, of like some authority, the, some king. The last song are the two that are the, the heaviest for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, Smile. Is that yeah, the one? That's we should just jump to that one. Um, that one's oh, yeah. one of my favorites. I another thing about King it, that fade away with the, the kind of post rocky uh, yeah, vocals. Yeah, I was going to even mention that it feels straight out of like Mogwai. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, it's it's the perfect kind of a sorbet to cleanse the palate after that. Uh, so it's like the perfect little dessert for that yeah. that beast that we went through. Uh-huh. Oh, it's a good track. Uh, and then Smile is, is similarly heavy. I mm-hmm. think this one's probably got the best instrumentals. And to me, that, yeah. to me, the theme, uh, it, it seems like it, it's something about like AI taking over or some, um, something yeah. like that. I mean, it's a pretty common like movie trope nowadays yeah. or thing to explore in a movie, but um, I think it's awesome. I mean, the if you think of it in that sense, w- with the instrumentals and with the screaming in it at the yeah. end, especially, it, yeah, it's just what is I really like is just really before big. the screaming, uh, it, Dan's vocals has almost like a soothing whisper effect going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, again, it contrasts the screaming so that it's almost like a like a wind up and a punch. Mm. I'm getting the sense that this is overall something you're really into. I am. I've been enjoying this album. Um, I've I know I need more time with it. It hasn't yeah. hit me as hard as Polaris did. Same, um, same. Beneath My Skin and Mirror Image. Yeah. Uh, this was probably my second favorite track uh, next to King. Mm. Um, because it does what King does, but stretches it out even further. Mm. Uh, with uh, the allowing of a build-up, having almost like a mirror image of itself. And this was a concept yeah. that if I were like a musician, I always wanted to do. Mm. Um, and it really allows it to build so that it's an echo of itself by the end, and it really pays off. Like, I will say that the one thing that this album has going for it is the, the length of it. The atmospheric presentation of this, if it was any longer, I'd probably start to get bored. Uh. Um, and so, because it's so succinct, each track has its own identity, and it's able to really encapture what they were going for. But had they prolonged it anymore i probably would have tapped out a little uh, bit. i i totally agree this has actually been one that 
I haven't necessarily been like hungry to jump back into right when I'm done. I like I need, yeah. I need some time and it is short and I really don't think there's a lot of filler, but it still does feel like it, it lags a little bit. Yeah, it still feels like there's a little bit of fluff that needed to work its way out of. Like I'm thinking of the track of, uh, what was it? A uh, Juno. Um, the one that mm. came right after, cause I think orbit is kind of a, a little bit of a, like the song between King and Juno. Yeah, orbital, that orbital, yeah, it's, it feels like I, I, I just lose, I, it never catches my attention. And I don't know if there's something significant about the lyrical transition too, but it yeah, just... Yeah, because it, it does what the track says, like it orbits, but it never really lands. Like it's mm. definitely a post-rock track. Mm, yeah. And maybe uh. it's, maybe part of this is, and you were going to say Juno too, maybe part of this is... Uh, this they really are sticking to the formula for the most part that they've done before you know we know this ambient there's almost like that overtone guitar sound that's really light um yeah. and and then you get like the really dramatic vocals and then it jumps back into like the heavy chorus and the and the the riffs are you know even though they're new on every album it does feel like for the most part nothing really surprised me they have a really unique sound i think mm-hmm. tesseract sound is like is theirs yeah. For the most part, just the combination of things they do, but yeah, I I do want them to go for it even more. Like I just want them to try something even crazier. Yeah, and that's why I really like the uh, Beneath My Skin, Mirror, uh, yeah. King, and uh, Smile. But I think the other tracks, I think they probably played it a little bit safe, mm-hmm. um, which is something that I didn't expect from a band like Tesseract. I feel like the last two albums for me have just had these moments of just like pure euphoria. Mm-hmm. I kept like, waiting I can, for that moment. Yeah, it wasn't, it, it never really happened. So like yeah. Beneath My Skin, Mirror Image, I like that track a lot, but it does feel like a tension is building that's almost unresolved for me. Like the chorus doesn't pay off as much as I had hoped it would. And yeah. I think I think back to tracks like Tourniquet or, oh, yeah. uh, or Hexes or something when they just, I mean, it was like just chills at one point where it's yeah, just this moment of like and it's unre- glory. Like it's relentless. Yeah. Do you have any like final thoughts about this album? Um, well, I did want to mention the the oh, production yes. a little more and just talk about that a bit because about which one? Just the production overall oh, and and some yeah. of the effects they throw in. If you listen with headphones really close, it's there's some pretty incredible little details added here and there. There's like little backward tape effects. There's yeah, no, little right. creepy yeah. piano things. They're just like details or they're just like ornamental you know Mm -hmm. they're not they're not core to the songwriting they're just little tinkling electronics and things added here and there that don't um i don't know they don't really keep me coming back like yeah yeah it's it's kind of like if i'm using a metaphor or i guess a simile it's like if you get a a chocolate sundae and there's a lot of sprinkles on it you're not there for the sprinkles you're there for the ice cream and the chocolate oh yeah 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 that's so, good. yeah, there's a lot of sprinkles on this album that you have to kind of shift through to really appreciate. Isn't Tesseract like one of your favorite metal bands? Yeah, I think so. But this one was a little underwhelming. I I like a lot of the songs a lot, but I think if I wouldn't have put the, the amount of listens in that I did just because I knew we were going to talk about it, it yeah. wouldn't have been um, it wouldn't have been something I naturally wanted to come back to too many times. Agreed. And I feel like this album is definitely a grower album. Like, I feel this is the perfect kind of album where you put on the shelf, let it mature a little bit, and then come back to, Mm. and then appreciate it a little bit more in the future. If I were to use my own scale, I'd probably say stream this album. Mm. Um, Yeah, I'd say like a 6 out of 10. Yeah, and that's kind of where a stream is. Like, a stream for me is like the middle of the road, 5 out of 10, 6 out of 10. It's it's worth a listen, but I wouldn't invest in it. Their next one has to be like a, a shift. In my I agree, opinion. yeah, because there's I can see themselves starting to paint themselves into this corner. I can see themselves getting too used to this box. Yeah. So I really hope that they they really shift it around. And I hope they actually do what they did with Polaris, where they release like a, a reworking of the tracks mm-hmm. uh, to really experiment. Because there's a lot of experimentation to do with these guys. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. And less less so in the the production, which I think they do really well. And more yeah. so just in the structures of the songs and the yeah. moods of the songs. Thank you so much for doing this again. It was awesome. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I have a blast every time. I feel like yeah. our musical tastes are similar yet different enough to have yeah. a, a really fruitful conversation. Yeah, we bring different things in for sure. 
Point. We're like the circles on this album, except we're... We, we talked about it last time. We're like the Venn diagram. So next week, we'll uh, probably do another video or two, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I know that uh, once I figure out the live stream, I hope to have you on a live stream. And uh, I believe on my channel, we'll do the uh, new Gaspacho album that's coming out in a couple of weeks. Sweet. Looking forward to it. Awesome. As always, thank you so much for watching.